So ACC spring meetings are done. Do we feel better about it, guys? Did we get that out? You know, sometimes you just need to vent. You need to talk about things and how bad they are. But potentially, when it's all said and done, the dust settles. We're still here. We're still in play. We'll talk about what the spring meetings could still mean in terms of the future of the ACC. Or is everyone just calm? <laughs> Listen, I'm a little, little geeked up. But all in all, I feel as if we might still have a conference with all the teams that we said we would. Or will we? You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked On ACC. I'm your host, Candice Cooper, joined by Kenton Gibbs of Locked On Wolfpack. Each and every day, you can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. It has been a hell of a week, if not only for the ACC, but just in life in general. Spring meetings have concluded. I don't know that we feel like 100% better, but we still have a conference. We still have a show. We still have jobs. So we can take those positives. We always are, can be glass half full type people. Kenton, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm great as always. I, I don't. I don't think that there's. Uh, I don't think that there's any imminent danger right away. So you know, we're we're in uh, we're in a good space. You know what I mean? You remember when they used to put the uh, the um, alert things on the news, and it would say, "How likely are we to be attacked or whatever?" And it was like a green through red. Oh, okay. We didn't well, have that. We didn't have that. Almost everywhere in the country had it after a certain event happened where there was uh, two very tall buildings that went down. And it was like, hey. Are we in imminent danger? I mean, I was, I know. A, I was in sixth grade. Like, That's what I'm saying. That was a thing. I'm I'm younger than you, and I remember that. So we first definitely of all, have you don't have to disrespect me on the show ever again in your life. Because black oh. don't crack. And people don't know. I could be 25 for all you know. Okay. Okay. Don't sure. start with me here. Sure. One. Number two. We still have jobs, amen. The positivity of this is, did we did we false panic? I feel like you were the only one that was pretty even kill. You always are even kill, but like there were there was some serious panic about that magnificent seven. Uh, these, I will say this one last time, and I hope to never have to say this again. The conference is not held together by these teams' adoration for one another. That's not what's holding it. It's not fairy dust in love. It's not the power of friendship, as the Care Bears would say. It's not that holding this conference together. It is the moolahs, the monies, the, the ink that people have signed. I don't know about that, Kitson, because according right. to Commissioner Phillips, final day of the meetings concluded, he reassured we're in this together. We believe in the ACC and we want to continue to work together. Well, well, let me ask you this. You work in sports communication, right? Sure. Okay. You've worked in sports communication in the past. So with that being said, imagine that you're Commissioner Phillips. Or imagine that you're writing Commissioner Phillips' exit speech from the ACC meetings. What would you say coming out of this? When you know it's a tenuous situation, our two teams at the top want to get paid more. However, a lot of these teams below them, they would leave to another conference if they had one lined up, but they just don't know that they can bring in the type of money to those conferences to make it make sense. Everybody would love to go to the $70 million or to go to a 50 or $60 million conference, but do you have enough to put into the pot to keep it at 60 for everybody is the question. Well, it's fair enough. So you, when you have your local writers, you have people who cover you know national media, big stage, all the things, people who cover the ACC. On the one hand, you look at theacc.com and you look at what they say in the conclusion of these spring meetings, and it's all cheery. It's all positive. It's all we are coming together to have these honest conversations, and we just feel better about it. We're recharged, rejuvenated for the 2023-2024 academic year, right? Mm -hmm. All sugary. I will say when you actually listen to or read some of these articles that come out in the different transcripts of Commissioner Phillips, a little more honest, you know what I'm saying? The reality is our conference is third in the country in distribution is what Commissioner Phillips said. And as we look at the projections, at least in this decade, we're going to continue to be there. But we want to close the gap. We need to close the gap between the two top conferences that have started to run away from us. So... 
there's acknowledgement that we're getting dog slap versus the Pollyanna, oh, we're all good. It ain't all about money. We're just such a good conference. So I think that can we give him a can we give him a nod for that? So if I was uh, and I've I've worked at you know I've worked at news stations I've I've done the I do organizational or majored in organizational communication in college and all that good stuff so let's let's break that statement down right right I think that what's happening is he's telling you what is objectively like you can look this up this is an observable truth that you can see from all the way you can objectively see the numbers are available in public for how much the revenue is being distributed to each team okay. So you can't lie about that. But what can you, you know, not necessarily lie or embellish, but give a positive spin to. What can you fluff? What can you fluff? Exactly. He's a he's a a great fluffer. And that made it that make it fluff. Okay. That has that word has multiple meanings, but yes, the fluff. Don't be weird, bro. we're, We're looking, we're looking here and we're saying to ourselves, what can this man fluff? What can he make it send down spin alley and turn into something good. All of the teams are still together. Well, all of the teams are happy. Somebody in the back says, what are you talking about? Commissioner Phillips? No, they're not. And commissioner Phillips says, how would they prove it? How could anybody prove that these teams are unhappy? Somebody. And somebody did tell back in February, Florida State Athletic Director Michael Alford said it's impossible for Florida State to compete long term in the ACC. Now he got up there to Amelia Island, maybe got a couple cocktails, maybe he got himself, you know, a nice little massage. And now all of a sudden, come Tuesday, said the 80s and the universities are very unified. So we're thrilled about being in this league and we want to stay in it. Now, what my auntie always taught me is there's an ant in the wood pile. She didn't use the word ant. But there's something in the wood pile. I mean, some shit stink, and there's one around the corner that's probably going to screw you when it's all said and done. And it would not surprise me if Florida State is that one that says, you know, this is all that sugary is good, but it's about that time. Yeah, and I, I, I've said on there multiple times, Florida State is one of the universities. It makes sense for them. It makes sense. They could potentially pull off that $120 million move, which, by the way, $120 million is one of the lower estimates because apparently – even after you pay the 120 mil, you're not free and clear. Yeah. So you're still going to have to owe on top of that, which of course is going to lead. I believe that the price tag is going to be hefty enough to where like, all right, I paid you the 120 mil and I'm going to pay a couple mil more for lawyers to try to like wiggle my way out of paying every dime that I possibly can. And of course the ACC is going to bring their lawyers out. And next thing you know, that's going to be a thing. And then you're going to ask, well, can the court get an injunction to make you play an ACC or can you go play free and clear? or Can you join another conference, not join another conference while this is going on? All of those things are, are definitely there. And again, I, I would very simply say that Phillips said what any leader would say in this position, confirm what is readily available, what is public knowledge, what can be public knowledge like that. And everything that you can, you know, spin in a positive way or, or you know, everything that you can put a, a hey, there is no war in Ba Sing Se for those of you who watch Avatar. You're going to do that. So let's get to some questions about it, right? Because at the end of the day, this is all about some real honest conversations in terms of the conference. Yes, Florida State is one that, you know, I think they're going to be the one that eventually leaves. I think Clemson is not too far behind them. But in terms of an arms race, like we're, we're crying about multi-millions of dollars, right? What is it about needing so many more millions than, you know, same as or, you know, above than other conferences that makes them feel like what we have is not good enough. Cause as we had talked about final fours, as we talked about national championships or Clemson, like why is it you still are not satisfied? Is it every school in the conference need to be elevated to the point where we're always competing during national championship season, or we're always competing during, you know, big title runs for our basketball programs. Like what is it about not being on the same level that it's just so grave when it's clear that our athletic programs are doing fine. Well, I mean, who wouldn't want more money is the question. But I'm greedy, greedy, greedy. In our in our society, excess is taught to be like, this is what you need. And like let's let's look at this objectively, not just from a standpoint of like societally excess. We're looking at you want to attract 18 year old men and women to come to or 18 year old young men and women or children, however you want to phrase it, to come to your university. 
And what gets them to come to your university? The shiny things. For by and large, you know, we can all pretend like, oh, yeah, these are deeply thoughtful human beings and all that. I wasn't deeply thoughtful at that age, and I don't want to project on anybody else. But that, for me personally, I just didn't want to play against any of my teammates in college, old teammates from high school and college. So that's what influenced my decision heavily. There are other very inane, very small, like, in the grand scheme of things, does that really matter? Stuff that sent people to, to the university they went to. For some people, it's, ooh, your locker room looks like a spaceship. For some people, it's, ooh, you you have a lazy river in yours. For some people, it's, my God, every time I come here, the stadium looks bigger and better. What is going on? You know, so that's that's just the reality. Sure, but you would think that with NIL now, it can, in one breath, we're saying that's going to even the playing field. The next breath is we're saying, like, we got to have more money for these universities to give people enough to blah, blah, blah. So, like, is it Uchi Wally or is it one Mike? And at the end of the day, we all know cash is king. I'm not telling nobody to not go where the money resides. But all I'm saying is at some point, it's never going to be enough. <laughs> like we can only have so many deals and so many wheelings and dealings before it's just like all the glitters ain't gold. I mean, I agree. There are certain there are certain thoughts. There are certain schools of thought to say that the uh, Big Ten and SEC as a whole are want to get enough power to secede from the NCAA altogether and start their own entity in terms of. Okay, um, hold this thought. Hold this. Hold this. Because I have to make sure that people buy bird dog. Hold this thought. Hold, okay. hold. This is another segue conversation. All right, guys, we want to make sure that you are locked and loaded when it comes to looking good. If you want to be in these Amelia Islands of Willings and Dillings, which you want to make sure you look in tight for it, we strongly suggest that you hit up our friends at Bird Dogs. It's always nice to have a stretchy fabric that makes your legs look great. And they're comfier than any short or pants that we have seen yet. If, whether you're on the golf course, meeting, date, or hanging out with friends, make sure you get bird dogs by going to birddogs.com slash locked on college and they will give you a little bit of uh, free custom bird dogs yeti tumbler with every order when you enter promo code locked on college now kenton brought up a good point we're talking about the secession secession seems to be a very hot topic around these parts big 10 and the sec could potentially secede from the ncaa which I ain't going to hold you. I'm not a fan of the NCAA for years of just watching them terrorize, turn down, and police. You know, a lot of my, honestly, some of my friends who were athletes in this thing trying to just transfer or trying, you know, maybe they got a sandwich from old Joe and now they can't play or they have to get fines or community service. So NCAA is its own issue. Big Ten and SEC wanting to be in its own league. I mean, that's cute. That's cool. But like, these are still public. These are well, not all public, but these are still college universities. Like, are we? Do we not care about academics anymore? No, only athletics. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I Got it. I don't like people keep talking about. I mean, and and this is on a separate conference thing, but people have seen the the pictures of LSU's library versus their locker room and all that. Yeah, that's not an accident. Yeah, that's not an accident, right? Like the yeah. the physical space that is a library in today's society is deemed less valuable than that locker room because that locker yeah. room is bringing in how much yeah. into the, the pot? You know, that's yeah. it's just the reality. Whether we want to deal and with that, that is, in a meaningful way or not, yeah. that's where we are. You're so right. The reality of that, though, is as big as that locker room is, as nice as those facilities are, how many of those jokers are making it out of that locker room and going on to do create generational wealth for their family by playing on Sundays? Well, is that the university's concern? Let's let's just be very honest with ourselves. And that's this is a conversation that I mean, a lot of people don't like having, but I'll have it with you. Let's be honest with ourselves. Is the university. So we're talking about the money of this thing right now. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, does it affect the university's bottom line in a significant way, whether or not their players go on to other than like the top two to three players every year going to the league? After you get past those top two to three at any school, by the way, this ain't just, you know, you 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 can talk about Clemson. You can talk about Florida State. You can talk about NC State, UNC, whoever you want in terms of thinking about Pitt, a team that puts out plenty into league. When you when you get past those top two, three, four guys and nobody else goes to league, does that hurt these schools bottom line? And if those if those guys who don't go to league or are are the very ill prepared to handle real life and all that, 
from college? Does that hurt the university's bottom line? I would hope that it would hurt your reputation. At, I mean, yes. First, first, no, it doesn't. It does not hurt their bottom line. Full stop. It does not. However, semicolon comma, at what point do y'all not see that this is just multi-million dollar, you know, plantation type energy, right? Like black, white, or other in terms of you're treating these athletes as just pawns and whatever we can use them. If they don't become successful athletes, whatever, we had them while we needed them during these four years to be successful. And the rich are just getting richer. I haven't seen breakdown plans of these distribution deals to where it is trying to help uh, not only these amateur athletes, but they're going to feed something funnel into their NIL type program that they have at their university. So their athletes can make more money. So that's the reason why you should come to these schools and yada, yada, yada. Like I haven't seen that plan yet. Don't, let me know. Let me know if you've seen it. Cause I haven't seen it yet. Mm-hmm. All I know is people at Amelia Island, Baldhead Island and my boy, Jerry Island is getting richer. But again, this is that. They don't I care? Mean, what Does is it matter? The, I'm, I have said this about these <laughs> universities from jump. And I stay saying it now. I have not changed course on this, nor will I ever change course on this, because there are very few things in life where people see this as like, oh, no, this is bad enough from a humanitarian standpoint that we as human beings must step in and stop this. And when you're talking about money, as long as people are not starving or emaciated or literally uh, dying from a lack of resources, it does not matter. The bottom line is met, and these people have housing. The and these people being the athletes, the the bottom line is met. We get what we need, and the players. And here's the other thing about it: individual responsibility is another thing that is very, very big here in America. We we are very big on individual responsibility. So, with that being said, it is then it then becomes well, if these players are not successful going forward, what did they not do in college? Because mm-hmm. my son went to NC State, and he. Uh, did great. He he went on to become a, a banker on Wall Street. Why couldn't um, why couldn't this player who played there for years and didn't go to the league? Well, well, my daughter went to UVA and, and got one of the best degrees around and became a writer for SNL. Why couldn't your son who went there do the same thing just because he played football or just because he played basketball? That's not on on the university. That's on that player as an individual ignoring some of the things that are built in to where athletes don't have the same time to make the same connections. Athletes don't have the same time to foster the same skills and live the same live, have the same lived experience as everybody else. But again, at the end of the day, these universities will not have their money disrupted by uh, players leaving, not prepared to handle the world because so much money was funneled into athletics. And that's, and that's, I'll say this as well. We are talking about the money funneled into athletics via the distribution model. However, these universities also have massive endowments. And if they're not doing anything with those endowments that get these um, folks prepared for the world, then I don't think that the the ducats coming in from sports would help in that major of a way anyway. Very well said. I think it's disappointing because at the end of the day, like the human side of this is what I keep reiterating that we're missing. Like the human side of making these guys feel like all they offer to this world is their athletic ability and prowess and make sure I get as many eyes TV deals on them as possible and keep making myself rich while I sit for my high throne. And I don't care what happens to him after it's all said and done and he spent his time at my you know respective university like are there you know great stories that come out of it yes are there guys that get business degrees go and do great things are there guys that go do you know comms degrees and there are people that they connected with while they're on campus and they help them get jobs yes there are your great stories there plenty as well as the guys who literally have no identity outside of playing sports who don't make the league or who don't, you know, never were going to make any sort of league and now are just finding themselves lost in the proverbial sauce. My my biggest problem with these uh, super conferences, which I've talked about before, and I, I hate saying uh, I'm, I'm going to stop saying I talked about before at this point, because, I mean, we've touched on nearly every Well, we have new listeners, and sometimes but, no one knows what you've said in past episodes. So this my, could be the first time people are hearing it from you. That's fair. My my biggest my biggest drawback is the, the amount of travel that these super conferences necessitate. Like, with all due respect, regardless of what the revenue sharing model was before, from a travel and logistics standpoint, most of these conferences got it right a lot more often than not, right? With the exception of West Virginia being off in, I believe it was the Big 12 
for the most part, you didn't have like crazy cross country travel like you would. Rutgers and UCLA and USC are about to be in the same conference. Yeah. Like that's a thing. Yeah. That's a, a student could very seriously in one week have to go from uh, let's just use let's use Ohio State as an example. You have to go from Columbus, Ohio, out to um, Pasadena, back to Columbus, and then back to Los Angeles for UCLA. Yep. Like that seems to be exorbitant. If you're talking, um, if you're talking a team, any team that's in the 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 Eastern Standard Time Zone, and you're traveling coast to coast to get things popping, that's just that nobody nobody cares about those production line items though, right? Nobody cares about how much it costs to fuel these planes to get how many guys on the travel well, team to their various locations. But that's that's why everybody wants a bigger deal because it, it's like, hey, well, if we got to do the travel and logistics, we want the bigger deal. My problem is that it is you can pretend all day and night, like, oh, it's no big deal, and we can we can have with the more money that we make from getting in this new conference, we can add academic support staff. Adding academic support staff would not help with the fact that somebody just traveled literally across two sides of the country in two weeks. And I know that there's going to be a lot of adults watching this to say, Oh, I do that for work all the time. Baby, you're 35. You've been doing this for years. You are, you are much more well adjusted to do that than a 19 year old who is dealing with a college workload college course low for the first time in his or her life yeah you're in a very different situation than the swimmer who just had to go out to the meeting at Rutgers and then the meet in Iowa and then back to another meet that was on the east coast and then to another meet that's on the west coast because all of those are in the same conference and we've just reached three different time zones in three weeks well, like, let's be let's be very clear about it too, though. Like as much as we love our non-revenue sports, they're going to be the first to go when all of this super conferences type stuff happen. Like they're not going to be able to support. It's just not going to happen. I don't I don't foresee there being a lot of non-revenue sports in this grand scheme. Maybe five to seven years down the line, people are going to start getting cut. Title IX, because of it, is going to start cutting men's programs because of, you know, how all that they have to configure. So that's the troublesome thing. But you did mention something, and we talked about it offline here, about, you know, having to travel and the UCLA teams, UCLA and USC joining the Big Ten and all of that stuff. We talked about the deals and the money that to be made. You try to add as many people as possible because everybody wants in on this SEC Big Ten pot. But... Let's be honest about it. Once you start adding more people, does that not lessen the money load? If you have, like, if we have ten, you add twelve. I gotta split it twelve ways now. So, and and here's the part. Here's the part of logistics that a lot of these schools fans aren't thinking about. And this is not. I'm not gonna call out any school because almost every school is guilty of this. If your school ain't making that type of money, where are UCLA and USC located? Southern California. What size market is that in terms of? Uh, top, top America, five. top five, top five. I believe it's the number two market in America. I believe New York is number one in their number two, New York mm-hmm. City, number one, their number two. You're looking at a top five um, market in America, Oklahoma and Texas. Can you think of bigger fan bases? Can you name five bigger fan bases than Oklahoma and Texas? Just off like the thought of like, oh, this fan base is probably massively bigger. Mm. No. It's a reason old McCullough Brown left UNC the first time. It's a reason. All right, this is they got they have absolutely ginormous Ma- fan bases. Ma- who? Uh, McCullough. Is that, I, is that his real name? I, I have no clue. That's okay. So I, <laughs> I was like, wait, break. Fourth I, I wall break. Think, like, is that his real name? I, I don't think so, but you you know me. I love pe- giving people random names. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reason that he went to Texas the first time. Yeah. They have they they have their own network. The Longhorn network is a thing, right? So it makes sense for them for a a a SEC to say, hey, come on, come on. You can make yeah. some money. Yeah. You can make some money over here. For Florida State and Clemson, it makes sense. It makes sense. A lot of these other schools, we got to look at the numbers a little more closely because some are generating really great numbers in basketball, but their their football numbers, are, <clears throat> some of them, some of these schools are making good football numbers, but their basketball numbers. <clears throat> and so when you look at that, yeah, 
you're, you're seeing a situation of everybody imagines, well, hey, you know, I'm sure that Florida State is rubbing everybody's shoulders, telling them, oh, you, we can leave this conference and all of us can go get all the money elsewhere. Really? Can all of us go get the money elsewhere or can you go get the money elsewhere? And I think that that's what a lot of these ADs are aware of. That's stopping them from this secession plan because they know there is no landing spot that is going to pay you more. Where are yeah. you going to go? And I truly believe that it's like, you know, from a church moment, like everybody ain't able. And that's just going to be the hard truth about it. Everybody ain't going. Everybody, somebody's feelings is going to be hurt in the end. As you've said about this the entire week, somebody's lying. And there's reasons why nobody ran, because when you look at them contracts, nobody was willing to make that buyout. After thorough investigation, after thorough lawyer review, it says sit your ass right where you're supposed to be. So, like, we can hype this up as much as we want to, and we can talk about the potential, da 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 It's never been more prominent, but like Commissioner Phillips said, and I will agree with him, there's never been a time where it's been so top of mind for folks because of the arms race that it seems to be in the present. Like, this wasn't a big deal 10 years ago, but now it's, like, every other day, it's who can give me the best deal, who can give me what. It's, like, the greed is just – the cloud of yeah. greed is getting bigger and bigger to me. Again, these teams have played Mack truck. I mean, have played chicken with a Mack truck, and all they have is a pencil. And, and I'm sorry, you're not the Baba Yaga. You are not John Wick. You can't do with that pencil what you think you can do. Bro. Okay, you're gonna get you get out the way, child. Get out the way. With all due respect of the Magnificent Seven or or the Great Eight or whatever you want to call them, how many of those teams at bring in enough money? to make sense for them to go to these universities. Because like you said, when you add into the pot, it divides. You need to add in enough to the pot that when your team is 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 done doing their, how many views, how many viewers did y'all have? Okay, how much did y'all, um, how much did y'all brand stuff sell? Like in 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 Walmart on, on uh, fanatics.com, on in your school store, all that. How much did your stuff sell? Okay, now how much did all this? You you need to work out the numbers in a yeah. way that makes sense. Yeah. And a lot of these universities, again, I think at max, at max, potentially four to five of those universities, it makes sense for them to jump elsewhere at the yeah. moment. A hundred percent. And like, listen, and that's being I generous. Thought, that's being very generous of me to say four to five. <laughs> I think Louisville. I thought Louisville was going to be the eighth Infinity Stone to get this thing popping. Did all rumors cool i do think that there is some truth about teams having conversations questions and everyone is very much man for themselves i don't buy the we're all in this together thing i understand why you have to save face to say right now because you're literally about to go into july where you have to have acc kickoff and prepare for a season like hey i know we're all having everyone's a sports management mark you know major everyone's a marketer everyone's an attorney everyone has all these insights at the end of the day you still gotta play games at the end of the day, it still has to be championships. At the end of the day, we still have to, like, get things rolling, right? All this fluff is cute because we ain't got nothing to do, but it, we still got to pick up helmets, do all that, put in orders, all that fun stuff. You know, like, there's money to be made. There's people that still have jobs and, like, all the things. So at, I'm just here to say ACC is still standing. How long? Who knows? But I'm not not crying over millions for anybody in this group. Not Not a one. Yeah, I think that it's it's the reality of, you know, you need to I mean, like you said, it's it's an arms race. Well, it's uh if you compare it to an arms race, what is one of the the greatest uh greatest deterrents to war per se, right? Or what's the one of the things that will help you win the war? having bigger armaments, having better bigger and better armaments. And what helps you win in the living room when you bring these young men and women to your campus, you can say, "Look at our facility." Look at this. Championships, of course, help. Championships, of course, help. Absolutely. No offense or us about that. But bringing players in and saying, look at our facilities. Look at this. You think you're going get to get to train like this? The group of five, and we haven't mentioned them at all in this, but the group of five, I remember there was one school in particular who actually performed very well in their group of five conference. They had, they got it updated. So I know it's not this way anymore. They had a weight room that was so small, only one position group could work out at a time. Mm -hmm. and so that obviously was a big deterrent for like you can't bring in a, a certain caliber of player because that's just the odd thing especially when players from football powerhouses 
are used to being in a weight room where at the whole team would work out all at once right. and everybody would, would do the max days and, and do all the cheering when the teammate hit a new max and all that. And they are going to go to college to go to a lesser facility than that. These well, teams- start, yeah, it starts at the grassroots level. Cause I mean, you got IMG academies. Now you've got these big type of private school funded type facilities where they are pretty much at college. They're only going to expect the high level, the best of the best. And you got to compete. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 and you know, I I'll tell you this in terms of like the IMGs of the world and the teams that play international or not international, a national schedule and whatnot. I mean, it's, it's a lot like comparing to what these uh, college kids are going to have to do. But again, it's just very different because college ball is on a different level. Yeah. It's on a different level than high school. Number one. And number two, um, the the course load, the academic rigor is generally going to go up. I'm not going to speculate on what IMG Academy's academic uh, rigor is or is not. However, I'm speculating based on high school, college. It's a jump. There's a difference there. It's not necessarily or it shouldn't be the same thing, at least. So, you know, this is this is one of those situations where, yes, everybody is chasing the most money. And that's all that matters. Like, let's not feign like the, the player yeah. wellness is a thing. <clears throat> let's not feign like. Oh, yeah, we we care about all these things. And with this money, we will help out academics in a way that we weren't before. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. No, and I, I think so, that's uh-huh. I think that's the most disappointing part of all of it. As a former student athlete, you know, we can have all the money in the world. But if you're not preparing these people for life, because there is life after sports, regardless of you make it to the league. If you don't like there is life after athletics. I don't care if you work in it. You there is you still have to figure out your way when you are not competing. And so I think that's been to me full circle moment and ending this is it's so disappointing how people just do not care more and more about these athletes every single day. So long as they're what bottom line is good to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. I agree that that's getting not, worse to me. I agree. <laughs> it's, that, well, it's more blatant. I should say, sorry to cut you off. Oh, you're good. I, I agree that that's not ideal, but I mean, it's the reality that we live in. It's the reality that we live in. And I love that you're such a straight shooter, Kenton. You're such a straight shooter. I Hey, listen, I'm, <laughs> I might tell you a joke, but I never tell you a lie. Okay. And I'm going to tell you what it is, what it ain't, what it could be and what it can't. And the reality is um, these, the super conferences that are are forming and all that, and whether or not the ACC stays around, it's all based on the revenue. And that's it. You can find a way to justify, well, Hey, us making more revenue is, is what's good for the players. And you can find a way to justify that. You cannot find a way to justify what is good for the players, but hurts our bottom line. It's better for us as a university. You can't. For what is profited if a man gains the whole world, but loses his own soul? For what does he gain? I mean, well, I mean, everybody don't subscribe to the same, you know, thoughts and religious beliefs that we have, that certain folks have, you know? A hundred percent. Uh, they, I, when you, you ask him, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? And that man would say, the whole world. That's what's to be gained. The whole world. I, I that's just, your problem. Because to get it, you have to sustain it. And I don't see this being a sustainable system. But what that's do fair. I know? And that's why they don't pay me the top dollar. Anyway, go. I know I got a job on Monday. Kenton, it's always a pleasure to have you here on this show. On Next week, we will get back to our schedule talk. Maybe a little portal party action, but we would love for you guys to continue to follow and subscribe to our channel wherever you listen to podcasts, as well as download from an audio space. Leave us five stars on Apple, please. For Candace Cooper, Kenton Gibbs, have a great and safe weekend, everybody. Until next time.